Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel and in today's video we are going to be discussing ocean and rip currents. So ocean and rip currents are either your best friend or your worst nightmare. They are the currents that kind of suck the water back out that the waves are bringing in. And these are the currents that can either really help you out in the water or they can actually really hinder exactly where you're going and where you want to be going in the lineup. So today we're going to be talking about two different instances, firstly on sandbars and then on reef breaks and exactly how you can use these rip currents to your advantage and how to get out of them if you happen to get stuck inside the rip currents. Rip currents are formed by the waves bringing water in towards the beach and then that water then draining back out and creating these currents and rips which actually pull out through the lineup and in most cases are really helpful when you are paddling out. In my life I was very lucky to start off in a life-saving group and this allowed me to learn about these rip currents and they actually showed us and taught us exactly what this was all about. Where I grew up on North Beach, there were piers that lined every single beach and this allowed you to really get an understanding on how the rip currents work and how they could pull you out and assist you in getting out to the back line. If you guys haven't checked out the merch, please do yourself a favor and click this link up here to check out the merch and get a look at what I have going on. I am so thankful for all the support so far. It's been absolutely amazing and I couldn't have asked for a better way. We are now halfway to my goal for the end of the year and I just want to thank everyone that's taken the time to go and check the website out, purchase any goods and just uh, showing them off. Please tag the Boogie Everyday Instagram page and let me know exactly where you guys are in the world and I will keep reposting all these things up. Back to the video now and I just want to show you guys a few pictures and just explain to you how these rip currents work and where the best place to get in them and actually what you are looking for when you are standing on the beach so that you can start to understand a little bit better and this will actually help you in getting out to the outside and getting to the back line and allow you to have an easier and smoother paddle out instead of getting into the impact zone and in places where you don't really want to be. So let's get into it. So looking at this first image, you can really start to understand exactly how the rip currents are formed. On the outsides, you can see the waves are breaking in towards the shore. And then what happens is the water then starts to drain out through the center. And that is how these rip currents are then formed. The easiest way to get out of these is to paddle either in a 90 degree direction straight away where you can see these two arrows saying escape. Now that would be the easiest way to get out of the current and actually into the white water and the white water will then force you back towards the beach. If you cannot do this or you get tired, sit in that current, go all the way out to the back and allow yourself to actually get around and all the way around and as far away from that current as you can get in order to get into the wave lineup and back to the beach. Next, we're gonna look at this photo of caves. Now, there's a couple things to note in this photo and the first off is there is multiple peaks along this beach. When you are looking for places to paddle out or rip currents that you want to get into, you really want to be looking where either the least foam is or where the gaps are in the sand. So first off, you can see that there is a piece of foam here that's actually getting sucked out to sea and that is where your rip current will be. Any time that you see anything going out like that is probably the best place to paddle in because it is where the water is actually draining off the sand and that will help you and assist you in getting out. In saying that, this is another brilliant image that really depicts how this current is working at caves again and we are lucky that we can get a good vantage point from the top here to actually see how this current is really making this big circular formation where it's sucking the sand and the water out. Now in order to get into these currents and to find these from the beach, it would be easier to get a little bit of advantage point on the beach and actually be able to see where the currents are moving and where it is draining out. A good example of currents that are draining out is this one right here. 
you can see on the left as well as on the right you have two breaking waves and then in the center is where this current is pulling out. On the beach it will be easy to see this and you can actually get a defined current majority of the time just by looking at where the waves are not breaking or where that water is coming from the beach and heading out to sea. When you look at this shot of caves in the early morning you can actually see where the current is starting to pull out. There is a much bigger ripple effect on the center here and you can actually see where the waves aren't really breaking too much. That means that the sand is getting eroded and getting pulled out to sea and that is the best place to paddle out. This will allow the currents to actually pull you out and will better your chances of getting to the back without actually getting onto the sandbar and getting into the impact zone and getting a lot of waves on the head. This will allow you to get out to the back line a lot easier and a lot smoother and will make the surfing experience that much better. When we look at reef breaks like this shot of front on, you can quite clearly see that the wave is breaking on a shallower piece of reef. Generally what happens on a piece of reef is it actually ends up sticking out of the water and that allows for the fall off on the sides to be a lot deeper. The best part about this is that it allows for a larger channel for the water where it is not going to break. For the most part you could probably sit in that channel on a boat or on a jet ski and not even get touched by a wave but as soon as you go onto the reef that is where the waves are forming and where majority of the energy will be. So finding out where there are gaps in the reef and finding out where there are places where the waves don't break is very easy because you can see them when there is no foam. Now in saying this there will be rogue waves that will come through the channel and will most likely hit you but at the same time the chances of you hitting the bottom in those places are very slim knowing that there is no reef below you or it is very deep. Now when we look at this image of Arika, this is something completely different. There is a channel on the right and the left hand side of this wave which makes it very easy when it gets bigger to actually start off on this point and the bottom corner here and allows you to paddle all the way around without really that much of a problem. When it gets a little bit smaller there is a keyhole in front of the competition site that allows you to paddle out and goes again into deeper water creating this channel effect. That allows you to paddle out a lot easier and will actually make the experience that much better because majority of the time you can get out there without getting your hair wet or by just duck diving one or two waves. So guys, I hope you understood exactly what I was saying both about the sand bottoms as well as the reef bottoms and how these differ and the best way to get out to the outside. Please remember that it is never a good idea to swim against these currents and try and battle the currents back towards the shore. All you have to do is start to paddle away from the current at a 90 degree angle and this will eventually push you out Otherwise, sit in the current, let it take you out to sea and do like a big U-shaped turn and come back in. The ocean is a very powerful place and knowing that and giving it the utmost respect is exactly what you can do in these situations. This was really a video to get you guys to understand the rip and the ocean a little bit more and as I have discussed before, this is really where you guys are going to excel in the bodyboarding and it will just allow you to make the experience that much better and that much more of an understanding when it really comes to surfing, especially if you're gonna be surfing bigger waves and want to be pushing yourself further in the sport. I feel that these little pieces of information are some of the things that's really helped me throughout the years and really pushed me to get a better understanding of the ocean and really build up a respect for the ocean and exactly where to go and how to make the experience just that much better. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell to get notified about these videos first. And we will see you in the next video.